quick word about motors before I uh, go too far. Um, my leaf blower has a brush motor. Before even cutting a wire, I went on Google and looked up the different motor types. Um, there's two main types of motors. There's brushed and brushless. The brushless motors uh, need a, either AC current or a controller to run. But a brushed motor doesn't care whether it's AC or DC. So battery current being direct current. I can plug a battery into mine and it'll work fine. Not all tools will have a brushed motor or what's called a universal motor. Um, if yours has an induction motor, you can't do this. So uh, people at home who aren't sure, you need to go to Google and look it up and find out before you do anything strange. So, we're now uh, well, mid-November. And uh, as you can see, I got a lot of leaves to deal with. And uh, a couple of years ago, I got just a leaf blower with a normal plug, which means you connect this to the house and you drag it all over your yard. And you're usually like 10 feet short of where you want to be. So you have to come back to the house, get another cord, plug that in there, and it disconnects in the middle. And anyway, um, this year, because of my electric bike um, hobby, I have a lot of batteries, and um, I've been using these LiPo packs lately from Turnigy. Each one here is 25 volts, or 24 volts, we'll call it 25. If I put all this in series, I get 100 volts, which is pretty close to what you get from your wall outlet. Um, I cut the cable off of my blower, and I put some Anderson power poles on the ends. And with a cycle analyst, which normally goes on your handlebars, I can measure how many amp hours or how much capacity of my battery I've used, and I can see my voltage. Um, it's a lot more fun. I mean, using a rake is, is faster, but um, not nearly as much fun. So, we're going to plug all this in and show you how it works. Alright, just a um, quick bit of battery stuff. See here, I've got four packs, and uh, don't mind the red tape and the black tape and the blue tape and the whatever. These are my rejects um, packs that have bad cells or not perfectly balanced voltage on every cell in capacity so I use them around the yard for everything from lighting in the house to blowing leaves. Um, connecting batteries in series is really simple hopefully the camera gets this but uh, one, two, three, four packs so I take the positive of one to the negative of the next pack positive of this pack into the negative of that pack positive of this pack into the negative of that one and I'm left with one positive and one negative. Now these are um, bullet connectors so male and females can't be messed up like this. It's safe in a way but I prefer Anderson's and uh, if I can find them, I had them a moment to go. Oh, there they are. Um, I crimp some Anderson's on the end of bullets so I can just hook them up like that and like so. So now I'll take my extension and my positive and I put that in my backpack then I connect my cycle analyst from battery to uh, connection. See the fun thing with Andersons? These are the wrong side, so I can just slide them out, slide them in, now they are. So now I've got 98.8 volts and, well, kilometers per hour, it don't matter here. Uh, I'm going to reset to zero, like that, and go to my amp hours and amps. So now, if I put this on my back, My backpack with my battery, my cycle analyst in my pocket, plug in my tool, and away we go. We got wires but no extensions.
after all that, we're going to check in. I'm at 95 volts and I've used 0 0.6 amp hours. Uh, the pack is a 5 amp hour pack, so less than 1 amp hour, um, about half of 1 amp hour is what I've used. So I've got a good 20 minutes of run time, continuous, and it's as powerful as when you plug it in the wall, but you're not dragging an extension. Pretty cool.